So this is my vision of summer 2018. So before this summer, I gave a bunch of talks and I wanted to take a break for the summer and I decided I'm gonna rest a little bit, I'm gonna code a lot, I'm gonna release a product, I'm gonna make something awesome, so then in the autumn, in the winter, I have something to talk about, right? So I thought I'm gonna code a lot and I'm gonna release something. The unfortunate reality of my summer 2018, it was something like this. And you might think, oh, because it's summer and it's sweaty, like it's, it's very hot and you were sweating while coding, no. I wasn't sweating because of coding and the sun, I was sweating because sometimes I tweet stuff like this. And then 191 people just like roast me in the, in the replies. Like I read only 10 of these replies, but I'm pretty sure that the 181, the rest of them are just good comments about me, my mom, it's just the, the best stuff ever, right? So why am I putting this here? Because I wanted to have like a discussion that we cannot have in our community. Because when you see these words, like either you, you pick a side, right? You pick a, you pick a team, you're either on one team or other team. We cannot like discuss it without being offended in a way. So when you see one of these words, you can already see people are leaving from Rebecca, like, oh, fuck that, I don't like JSX, I don't like CSS, I don't like the other thing. What I wanted to have here, I just wanted a discussion. If nothing existed and we just wanted to invent like how would things work in front-end development, and we have like two different approaches. So let's start with CSS. It doesn't have a name, it's not called CSS. The other thing, it's not called CSS, it's JS. It doesn't exist, they don't have names. And you pitch it to someone and you say, look, we're gonna approach styling in front-end development in this way. The first way is you have like 20 different files, these like huge documents, they don't have a name, and they have like thousands of rules inside of them, and then you point like five of those rules to one of your elements, and maybe, just maybe, you pray for it, that element is gonna get styled in that way. Maybe not, maybe it's gonna be in like far corner somewhere and you're wondering like, where do I fix this? That's number one. And the second thing is you pitch it as, it doesn't have a name, it's, you style something in a way, you point it to styles, and it's styled in that way. I think the second one makes a bit more sense if you don't give it a name. If you give it a name, it's like, no, I don't like it. I still use the other thing. Same with REST and GraphQL. I'm not going to go into all of them, but the second one, I also love it. Like, it doesn't have a name. You pitch the first one and you say, you want to grab a bunch of data from your server, and you need to combine six different things, normalize them on the client, combine the data, send it back, whatever. You need to do a bunch of operations to get five different things. And then you pitch the second one. Whatever you need on the client, you describe it and you get it. It makes a bit more sense, but a lot of people wouldn't want to admit it. So I'm not here to defend my tweets. This talk is not called Kitze is defending his own tweets for 30 minutes. Why am I putting this here? Because in the 10 replies that I read, people called me, you're bad towards beginners, you're sending the wrong message, someone got offended and so on. And I felt a little bit bad bef because before each one of my talks, I have this segment about ninja developers, rockstar developers, and all of these like, imaginary things that we like to use. And I felt bad because I'm trying to spread that message that everyone can do a, a, a talk at a conference, at a meetup, everyone can teach, and people thought like, oh, he's that guy who's like hostile to beginners. So I'm gonna put that segment again here. Let's discuss these three topics, ninja developer, rockstar developer, senior developer. We need to erase them, all right? Let's start with the first one, ninja developer. Have you ever seen a person on a roof at 4 a.m. writing CSS? No, they're doing ninja stuff, right? Then we have the second one, senior developer. I still don't know how the hell do you define this. There's no definition for this. So for me, the only senior developer is, is this guy. He's a senior and a developer. Or we can call this guy senior developer. There's no such thing as senior developer. Then we have the last one, rockstar developer. Oh my god, this is the worst. Have you seen a rockstar? Have you seen an actual rockstar? Like this is a rockstar. And this is everything but a rock star. Let's make it clear, all right? And we have the phrase after our talk, he rocked the stage. No, this is the reality, at least for me. He read his notes from made on a plane slides, trembling for 30 minutes while praying that people won't find out he's a fraud. So I'm making this point because I want everyone to try and talk at a conference. People who are standing on this stage, we're nothing special, all right? We just figure out, oh, I'm gonna talk about something. We got up here. At the end of the day, all we are is like code monkeys trying to make weird libraries work together by writing shitty hacks. And that's, that's the intro that I have before the talk. That being said, uh, hi, I'm Kitze, I'm a rock, no, I'm kidding. I'm just a developer. So I love making products. 
I said I love open source. I don't love open source. I like open sourcing things and not maintaining them later. And I love teaching. So we did a workshop here yesterday. I have a workshop called React Academy. Previously, we thought abo about a bunch of things. Now it's only like React hooks, 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 bit of suspense hooks. Everyone is crazy about hooks. So that's the workshop. Today, we're going to talk about state management in a GraphQL era. So what is GraphQL? For those of you who don't know, you, you know pretty well what's GraphQL. So it's the thing you're just postponing. I'm going to learn it one day. But you know it's going to replace REST, but you're still like, no, one day I'm going to learn it. And what is REST? Let's see. If I want to grab a bunch of things from my server, I have to call like all of these API calls. I would have to get all of the data, and then I would have to combine it on the front end. If I want to do the same thing with GraphQL and, and get all of this information, I can just write the query exactly how I need the data. So I can say I need my current user with the activity, with the post. For every post, I need the title. So the front end just describes whatever you need. And on the back end, you have resolvers to actually resolve that data. In my opinion, single page apps ruined everything. All right, We were trying to get to a faster car. But instead of a faster car, we somehow ended up with whatever this thing is. So this is a single page app. All right. We moved everything on the client. We decided, no, 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 we don't like service anymore. Everything goes on the client. So why is that bad? Because of state management. So let's discuss what is, what is state management actually on the client. So we have forms, we have routing, we have inputs, tabs, filters, menus, checkboxes, navigation, date pickers. You have all of these things that you need to handle the front end. This is easy peasy. No matter what you pick, like React, Angular, Vue, even jQuery, Vanilla.js, you can handle these things. It's not that hard. A big problem. And why do we have these conferences and discussions and everything? The big problem in state management is this, is data. So it's like three times as big as all the other. Like They're really, really small problems. We can solve them easily. But data is a big problem. This, this guy likes data. <laughs> so data is the number one reason why state management is hard. And why is that? Because we need to fetch the data. Then we need to cache the data. Then we need to read from the cache. Then eventually, when something updates, we need to invalidate that cache. So all of these frameworks for state management, we have them because we're dealing with data, not because we're dealing with tabs. That's like easy. So my first jQuery app, this is me writing jQuery. It was like spaghetti code, 3,000 lines, one file, main.js. You put everything inside of it. So I had a bunch of code. Then you have a ca calendar plugin. You don't, load on, you don't download it for NPM. You just put it there with a comment. Calendar starts here. You put the calendar code. Calendar ends. More code. 3,000 lines. So it was a mess. So I was like, I wish that we could use something better to refactor this app because it, it works, it's nice, but it's not maintainable. Like I feel sorry for the next guy who would have to you know, maintain the app. So I wanted to move to something else. Back in the day, Angular 1 was popular. Nowadays, Angular 7, 8, just Angular, whatever you call it. And I loved it. Like Everyone made the transition through, from like jQuery or something else, or Backbone, whatever, to Angular 1. It was amazing when you're solving jQuery as a problem, right? So we had like controllers, we separated everything. And I couldn't believe like the two-way binding, the root scope. It was amazing. Until I sat down to explain Angular 1 to my roommate. So he was like, OK, you're babbling about Angular for so long. Just, just explain it to me, all right? And we sat down, and I started explaining Angular. And I'm like, so this is what you have. You have the template, and then you have like the controllers and the factory that goes in the controllers. So you have factory, and you inject the service. Or you have a control. And, and then I'm repeating all of these buzzwords. And I'm like, this is so unnecessarily complicated. It could be like simplified. So I was waiting to move on from Angular. I didn't move on right away. But I knew like all of those buzzwords ca can be a little bit simplified. So I was like, should I move to Angular 2? Should I move to something else? All of my colleagues in the company were already using React. So I decided, all right, I'm going to try React. So I'm not going to babble a lot. I have a workshop about React. Of course, I'm going to say nice things. Yeah, it's great, it, it, blah, blah, blah. React it was good. So when I started writing React, I had the problem with the data, right? React doesn't solve anything out of the box. It's just a UI library. It doesn't have a router, doesn't have forms, doesn't have anything. So I was trying to be too smart. So I said, anytime I'm going to fetch this API slash post or, or whatever, I'm going to make my own cache, right? I'm too smart. And my cache was just an object. So I was checking the object. If the object has a key called API slash post, read the data. Otherwise, show a loading spinner. I was like, this is fast. We don't see loading spinners anymore. And it was good until I had to invalidate the cache, because this cache wasn't normalized. And I was like, how do I invalidate the third post if this is not normalized so it doesn't work like a database? So it, it was hell. That, that went pretty quickly. And then, of course, I reached out for the most popular solution. Everyone was talking about this. Use Redux. Use this is a visual representation of, of how Redux works. Like it, it solved my problem a little bit, but it, it's a nightmare. All right. 
I'm still conflicted about Redux, right? I love Redux. I love the concept of Redux. If you haven't watched the Egghead series where Dan Abramov recreates Redux from scratch, like it's pretty entertaining to see like how simple this library is. It's just like a couple hundred lines of code. You can write it yourself. It's really simple and a genius concept, but I hate it because it makes me write so much boilerplate to do the simplest things. If you don't trust me, here's the author of Redux saying, no hard feelings, overhyped, low level, often used unnecessarily. Then he wrote an article, you might not need Redux. This is like a band releasing an album and saying, our album sucks. Don't listen to our music. So I like that he can be like, he can be objective and he can say, you might not need it for every app. This was a post on Reddit. Someone said, hi Reddit, I'm just learning React, so I, I want to do API requests. How do I fetch data? You don't have a data fetching thing. I used Angular. It had everything in it, so I could use data fetching. Now you, I, I don't know what to do. And of course, Reddit's answer was, just use Redux Saga, just. Just mind the word just there. You don't say just when you mention Redux Saga, right? That's like your girlfriend is like, there's a bug in the house, and you're like, I'm just going to take the bazooka. You don't say just. It's like the most overkill answer of all times. Just use Redux Saga. You don't need, like, right now, during this conference, there's some poor person, poor soul, trying to connect, like, Redux Saga with Redux Form to make a login form with two fields. Just use jQuery. Don't even bother. And yeah, this, again, same roommate. We were sitting in a restaurant. He's like, I have the most genius idea for an app. He's a, he's a startup founder. So he said, uh, I have, uh, we're making coffee in our company every day. They were a small company, so he's like, every day a different person is making the coffee. So I just want to make a randomizer where we put all the names. I just press, like, find me a person. And then it goes like, and we get a person. Th that person go and grabs coffee or makes coffee, whatever. He's like, let's throw in an, uh, an HTML template. Let's throw in some jQuery. And we're going to be done in like 30 minutes by the meal comes. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No jQuery. I'm going to teach you Redux. So he didn't know React. He didn't know anything, but I taught the guy Redux. Like, we were in a restaurant. It was pretty late. So I started talking. He was like, okay, tell me about it. I'm like, okay, we have an array. We have five files. So I tried to explain him how in five different files, we need to use five files to push something in an array. So by the time I was done explaining how we're going to put the people's names in the array, the restaurant closed. The waiter came over. He was like, what the fuck is that code? That's too much code for, for like, pushing something in an array. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And at that moment, like, I got self-aware. Like, it, it's the same thing when I was explaining Angular 1. Like, this can be simpler. And I've heard about MobX, people talking about MobX, but I'm like, oh, it was reactive, it's dirty, it's not optimized, it's Redux. But I closed the laptop and I told him, okay, I'm going to try that MobX thing. Maybe we're going to do this again tomorrow because I'm pretty sure there must be a simpler solution than Redux. So then I go home, I try MobX. I do, like, everything in 30 minutes. Everything works. It's reactive, it's using observables, and I fell in love with it, never went back. So ever since then, I'm using MobX, MobX State Tree, which is like a love child between MobX and Redux, uh, and it's amazing. I never look back. Um, but we always had these wars, like what, 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 is, what is better? Ever since front-end development existed, we had like these conflicts. So jQuery, Mutools, Angular, Ember, GraphQL, REST, Redux, MobX, React, Vue, Apollo, Relay and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of these discussions, and we're making the mistake here because we're asking what's better, all right? This is the wrong question when you ask what's better, which framework is better, what tool is better. Just ask what's suitable for my app, what's suitable for my team, what is suitable for our use case? And the answer is it depends. There's no like definite answer. Because I can tell you that Trump is great on a golf course, OK? So it's all about the context which you say, in which you say the thing. In our crazy React community, you might find articles like this. Like something else pops up, people are like, how are the components suck? So it's like on that end. And then on the other hand, we have like render props are everything. There's no middle ground. We cannot find the middle, all right? How about a healthy mix? Sometimes use the one thing, sometimes use the other thing, like you don't pick sides. Or like with Redux, we had the same thing. The community went from, we need Redux for everything in our app, to a Medium article saying Redux is dead. That's it. We don't use it. Like it has millions of downloads on NPM, but people declared it dead, right? And then now they released React hooks and context, and people are like, no, no, it's dead again. <laughs> because now we can replace it with these other things. And the funny thing is, Redux is just going to use these technologies under the hood. It's still going to exist. It's still going to be used. So yeah, we cannot find middle ground. So let's see some examples. Let's go back to the GraphQL thing. Let's see examples of data fetching. So if I want to fetch some data with Vanilla.js, I would do something like this. It looks nice, right? If I want to fetch data with Redux, I need three slides. So sorry for that. 
we need to dispatch these actions. Then we need a reducer, and in the reducer we need to spread the state, and then we need to update the state. It's like I got, I'm gonna fall asleep. It's we need to to do too much work in order to fetch data in Redux. In MobX we have something simpler. We have a class, we have observables. We fetch the data, we directly update the fields on the class, and and it works. But with GraphQL it's even simpler. In one slide I can put a component along with the data for that component, and when a colleague is gonna read it, they're not gonna hate me. They're going to be like, let's see here. What do we have? We have a to-dos component, and it has loading and to-dos. Where are these props coming from? Oh, it's from the GraphQL query. So it's going to make a GraphQL query. It's going to take the to-dos and the title. It's going to put them as props in that component. And that's it. Like it's, it's the description of the entire component, what it does, what it needs from the server is right there. If you, if you look at this, if I go back, where, what, where does it start? Where does it end? Where, what does it connect to? What it, it's a bit confusing. So I like the GraphQL way of, of fetching data. So the problem that we had here is we were fixing the sing instead of fixing the well. So a lot of people are discussing state management. Should we use this and that? Instead of discussing, should we finally stop using REST and start using Redux because, not Redux, start using GraphQL because that's the actually uh, the solution that we need. That's the REST is the where the problem is coming from. So the sync would be state management, the well would be REST APIs. So if we have the state management slide again with the data, and now if we remove the data from here, which is going to make Mark sad, we're going to be left, like we, we only have the simple things, right? However you tackle these things now, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not important. It's really easy. Anyone in any framework, any library, vanilla JS, you can solve these things as soon as you remove data from the equation. So this is, a, this is a pull request for a company that moved from Redux to GraphQL. You can see they removed around 5,000 lines of code. Of course, they added some lines for the queries. But like now everything is more readable, everything is cleaner, and it's more performant. So I like this pull request. And now you're going to ask me, do we even need a state management library when using GraphQL? I can summarize by my talk by saying it depends. So whatever you ask me after the talk, it depends, it depends, it depends. So I have a couple of examples just to not answer with it depends. I have a couple of tech stack proposals using GraphQL. So you can go vanilla. You can use like Apollo, which is the most popular uh, client library for GraphQL. You can use any router that you want, and you can use set state. You don't need to pull in Redux. You don't need to pull in MobX. You don't need to pull in something else. Then you might say, but we have complex form. We're a company that does, I don't know, trains. And then we have a form that has a form that has a form. All right, you don't need to install Redux. You don't need to install MobX. Use a form library. Same stack, just throw in a form library. And then we have, but my users live in tunnels. We have users who are in Africa. They're on 2G, and they don't have connection. I want everything to work offline. I need Redux. No, you don't. You can use something like cache persist to persist the cache of Apollo in local storage. It's still going to work the same. Don't over-engineer it. And then I have my favorite stack. I want to go home early. It's Apollo, MobX, MobX React for MobX routers, all of these MobX-y thingies. And why, why did I call it I want to go home early? It's because of the tweet of the MobX creator that said something like, MobX isn't trying to prove an academic point. It just wants you to go home early. But if you're paid by the hour, you, you should stick to Redux. You're going to get way more money. And then we have next level. So if you use Next.js, which is like a server-side uh, server rendering library for React, you only use set state and Apollo, you're going to achieve the same results. But I'm going to tell you something else. How about this? This makes you nervous, right? You want to leave. You're like, no, I don't give up my single page app. I like single page apps. Have you been lately to like Amazon, Airbnb, all of these popular huge websites? Are they single page apps? They're not. So go to Amazon and click on a product. Full page reload, then it serves you another page. So what, of, what are these big companies doing with all their engineering resources? And we are a small company, and we're doing a, a single page app, and we over-engineer it. So how about you have like a lot of mini apps? So for example, your products page is going to be like a mini app. Your product page is going to be a mini app. Your about page, the cart page, they're all gonna, you're going to treat them as mini apps. And then you don't have global state management. You don't need to solve state management for your entire app. You just solve these smaller problems. And yeah, you can also use like the Apollo clients. So if you don't want to use anything else except Apollo and GraphQL, you can say that this counter will come for the, from the client state management and the other things, I need them from the server. So in this way, you can describe this is what comes from the server, this is com what comes from the client state management, and then you describe the component with one query. 
So when using GraphQL in 90% of the cases, you won't need these hipster state management libraries. You'll be fine. When you solve the data part, you don't need them anymore. But who am I to tell you what to do, right? You're going to be a I, I have a train in like an hour and a half, so I'm not going to listen to all the talks. But you are going to listen to all kinds of stuff on this stage today, right? So this is going to be you after the conference. Or you think, oh, we might relax. We might go for a beer. No, you're going to sweat. Because I mentioned GraphQL, Harry mentioned like CSS optimizations and Walmart and money. And then the next person is going to tell you about reactive forms in Angular, some crazy stuff. So tomorrow you go to work and you're like, guys, we need to refactor everything. <laughs> everything from scratch. Nothing works. We have legacy stack, which you just started one week ago. So you're going to sweat, right? <laughs> Because we're saying all kinds of things here. So what I'm trying to say, like, you also know all of these people who are like, they're living on a bleeding edge. And you're like, oh, you're still not using Redux helicopter? It's like the best thing in our company. So we all know this kind of person. But if you know me from Twitter, you're like, um, aren't you that person? <laughs> Didn't you already open source two apps using hooks? Yes, I did. You can find them here. D did you do like workshop using hooks? They're out for a month. Yes, I did. You can find them here. Your tweets are literally FOMO-inducing for me, so you're the reason that I have this fear. Well, sometimes I tweet st stuff like this. The funny thing about this tweet is I'm inventing technologies that didn't exist back then. Like Webpack 4 wasn't released, Babel 7, CoffeeScript. I'm mentioning CoffeeScript. And the four replies are like people who are like, really? Like, this is a nice stack? So what do you think about CoffeeScript? It's dead. <laughs> it's dead for like five years. It's dead. Like, why do you feel the fear that you might be missing on CoffeeScript? So all the time, someone mentions a technology, like I mentioned GraphQL, you feel the fear. Oh, maybe we need to move. Maybe it's going to be. But you have to evaluate the context, right? You have to know about who is giving the advice. So you have to evaluate the context and your situation before you go and follow all the advice that's going to be here on this stage. So let me tell you about me just so you know if you should listen to me or not. So I work alone. I don't work for clients. I don't know what I'm doing. I experiment with a new library every week. I have a lot of free time. I'm doing only workshops. And then I'll make a Christmas tree out of this slide. So would you believe me? <laughs> would you trust me on like any advice here? You, you wouldn't, right? So raise your hand if this is you. I made something. It works, and I think it's awesome, but I'm not sure if it's right. And if you don't raise your hand, you're just lazy. All right. Cool. So most of us feel like this, right? You, you do something, you hear about something, and you're like, my thing is not right, but that other thing is right. So all the time, no matter what framework, no matter what technology, GraphQL, REST, it doesn't matter, we think that there might be someone else with the solution who is right, and we are never right. But that's not always true. You shouldn't feel bad if you're not feeling the latest and greatest. Who hasn't used a service worker ever? Like, I haven't. I haven't written a, a service worker, right? And you might think that you're missing out, but I'm going to tell you a cool example. So there was this company. They, they over-engineered their landing page using Vue.js and a service worker. It was totally unneeded. And then the service worker like cached the entire landing page, and they wanted to release updates to put the speakers and whatever. They couldn't because they fucked up the, the service worker. So they had to buy a new domain to redirect to a new page. <laughs> <laughs> because they fucked up. So they used it just because it was cool and someone said that service workers are cool. Then I have another example. When I was learning GraphQL, I sat down for a beer with a friend. He was telling me about their GraphQL stack. And he's like, we have this stack. We have like seven layers of cache. We have like global wide, I don't know, distribution of data, 0 0.7 mils. Like he's talking and I lost him after three seconds. I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's fast. Yeah, I get it. So he's telling me about his over engineered stack. And I'm wondering, like, what the hell is he working on? Like, dude. Are you working on Facebook? Are you working on a new Pinterest? What are you working on? It's like, no, 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 we're just working on a landing page for a hospital. There's never going to be a situation where the nurse goes like, doctor, we're losing the patient because our landing page is not fast enough. <laughs> All right? Stop over-engineering that part. And I have a client project story. Like the, when, I, when we first started working with GraphQL on a, on a client's project, the client didn't, wasn't technical, right? They didn't know what was going on. So we, the backend developer, decided like our backend is a mess. We need to refactor it anyway. Let's use GraphQL. I was like, cool. And then on the client, every time you fetch a query, every time you do something with GraphQL, you have to invalidate the cache. Let's say you have a bunch of posts and you want to push another post. When you do it on the server, you also want to update the client. So when, when I read the documentation, because we have to refactor an entire app, so we need like to be fast, right? And when I read the documentation on cache invalidation, Jesus Christ, I was like, I, I want to go back to Redux. Because if you want to invalidate the Apollo cache, you need to do like optimistic updates, and you need to find the post query to push in the post query, or there was an option to just refetch all the posts. 
I was like, fuck it, we're going with that. So for everything that happened on the client, like we refetched a really, really tiny query. It was like a couple of kilobytes, one, two, I don't know. So it didn't matter. So the app worked fast. We refactored everything really fast. The client didn't know what's going on. The client is not going to say, well, why aren't you using the cache invalidation? They don't care. They add a post. It's there. It works. We didn't have millions of users. We had like, I don't know, a couple of hundred users. It didn't matter to them if we were fetching the data again or if we were invalidating the cache. So at the end, like we reached our goal. We refactored that app. And then when we had time, when it was the time to like try and to invalidate the cache properly, we did it. But we never cared. And some people might be, yeah, but you're fetching data from the network. Why, why does it matter? So sometimes you shouldn't be scared. Like it's better to fetch a few kilobytes of data on the network every time than your team spending like weeks on over engineering the solution and then failing. And the client would be like, well, we lost so much time. We're going back to the old thing. I used to over-engineer things. Now I'm just trying to make my users happy. So really, if you think a little bit, not about your entertainment, not about entertaining yourself at work, but just think about the end user, you might do, like, you might do better decisions. Uh, I think we're coming to the, to the end of the thing. Yeah, so this is the conclusion. You should stop seeking external approval for the code you write. You should stop seeking all the answers in other people's projects. Stop feeling insecure because nobody actually knows what they're doing. And get get rid of your Twitter account. It's it's bad. Uh, you can yeah. I wanna I wanna finish with this slide. If you like what you're doing at your company, at your project, if you're not using GraphQL or whatever, just forget about this talk and say we like our stuff. Fuck that guy on stage, right? Keep using what whatever you were using. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you wanna know more about me, I'm Kitze everywhere. The Kitze on Twitter. And I'm gonna butcher this in Polish, but dziękuję i do widzenia.